Hello everybody and welcome to Quest for Creative. We are on episode lucky number 13 and today we've got an interesting one for you. But first, yesterday we fiddled with this guy right here. We made a machine to automatically generate ores for me so I don't have to worry about getting metal anymore because I always had a problem getting gold. Um, and as you can see, there's been a slight little change because when I logged on this morning, I saw this. And hopefully future me is smart enough to put this picture in in post-processing. Basically what happened is we are getting bronze. Like we got bronze, like something coincided and we got bronze. And it just stopped the machine from working. Uh, the, what I was saying in the last episode was that if we had... Uh, well, aluminum brass at the bottom of it, none of the other pipes will pull out from above the aluminum brass, so we had to account for the things that we could get. Well, apparently I didn't... I had no idea we could make bronze this way. Um, I usually made it through uh, thermal expansion. But, uh, yeah, so apparently there's a combination of something or other that makes bronze, and if you just happen to catch just the right circumstances, you can get bronze and screw up the entire system. So it's got to be taken into account, but, I mean, that's just simple. We just set bronze to a white list in a pipe, a uh, liquid duct, I should say, put it in a casting basin, another uh, hopper underneath it, pulling into the chest. Now, this has been running for about two days. Ooh, and I do want to point this out. I'll get to that in a second. Um, oh, this is going to be really dark for you guys. Uh, boop. This will help a little bit. But I added... Um, I don't know if I had the second row in there, but I did add a second and third row for all of the ores, the tin, the aluminum, copper, and iron. Uh, however, the gold... I only found that many. I cannot find that. It must be like super rare to get the gold or berry bushes because I have a whole bunch of the others. I could make an entire another row, but uh, I don't feel the need to. Um, but this seems seems to be working very very well. It also seems to work better in the dark. That's why I've left it dark. I know, it, I, I'm probably just delusional on that one. I haven't tested it, but it seems to work better in the dark, so I've been leaving it dark. However, after two days, I've got that. Okay, so we got two stacks of iron plus eight. We got 27 gold because I don't have that many ore berry bushes. A uh, bunch of bronze, blocks of tin, aluminum, uh, aluminum brass, and copper. I am set, man. <laughs> Uh, I, that worked out far better than I expected. I did not expect it to work out as well as it did. Um, another thing I did... Oh, and this is actually why it worked out so well. These four poppet shelves here, uh, if I hit F9, we can see they literally sit in four separate chunks to keep the four chunks loaded necessary to power the... Well, to run this entire thing. Basically, we got our power here, the 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 the... Oh, that is just inside, man. I didn't even take that into account. But we have the smeltery here. We got the cookings, or we got the ore berries spanning two chunks. And it works. It works well. Uh, this I set up, uh, just the S and berry bushes with the autonomous activator, same as downstairs. And uh, that seems to work out fairly well as well. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this just yet, but I'm fairly sure I can do something cool with it. Uh, turn that off. There we go. Uh, I did switch up the uh, rubber trees here. I put in the rowan trees because I have every intention of diving into witchery here shortly. Uh, over here, I switched from the spruce to just the oak. I may have had that in the last episode, but I know I didn't explain why I did that. Uh, and that is because... Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm working on the yellow heart canisters, and I just need one more. Um, yeah, I just need one more miniature yellow heart. I think I have one miniature red heart left. Yes, I had, uh, yeah. 
Uh, but I needed apples because I ran out of apples. I didn't run out of diamonds. I didn't run out of miniature red hearts or the yellow hearts. I ran out of apples. So I set this up and added to the lockers of infinity. So now we have uh, the Rowan stuff, the Rowan berries, which seem to be ultra rare. The saplings, oak saplings, and apples. And the apples are doing pretty good, actually. Uh, I have everything turned off at the moment. So, not, well, okay, that's still running, technically. It's kind of hard to turn it off. But all the stuff's over there to turned off just so that it's quieter because these things tearing up, just very, very loud. So I just waited till everything tore down, or settled down, I should say. Today, we are going to do something interesting. You remember when I set up the pipes and I said if I could get the crafting pipes working, it would be awesome? Well, I can't get the crafting pipes working because apparently they still break servers and I haven't I haven't heard anything about them fixing that yet. Uh, they might have, and I just don't know about it. I don't know. But I'd have figured out how to do it, and you do it with the Liquid Crafter. Now, you can't do it anywhere near as cool, like on demand, that you can with the crafting pipes. But you can do it automatically with the Liquid Crafter and the item ducts. And probably the... Uh, Project Red Pipes as well, but I'm using the Liquid Ducks because I know the Liquid Ducks. Uh, now, this is going to be extremely complicated. It, it It's small-ish, but it is a bit complicated. So, uh, I mean, I spent a couple hours today just fiddling with timing. Just in general, just a bunch of numbers and timing. And that's the hardest part about this particular machine is just the timing. And since I figured that out, I can show you guys how I did it. And then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, first thing I want to do is mark off where the chunk is so I don't cross it. Because I don't want this machine to be in a loaded like partway into a loaded chunk and partway not in a loaded chunk. Uh, let's just flatten this off a little bit. There we go. That'll work. And that should be wide enough. We'll build it that way. Turn off my chunk borders. All right. So, like I said, we need the liquid crafter, which isn't terribly hard to build. Uh, it's a combination of mine factory and thermal expansion. Uh, you crafting tables, machine frames pneumatic servos, the plastic sheets that are insanely easy, and portable tanks, which are also insanely easy, just glass and copper. Easy peasy, nothing major. A uh, couple of chests for buffer mostly. I probably don't actually need the chests, but I put them there just for buffer. A uh, bunch of redstone, redstone repeaters. There are other ways to do this part, but I haven't got... But I'm just going to do it this way because that's how I tested it. Uh, item ducts, pneumatic servos, and output. Some form of output placement. I'm going to use lockers because that's just what I have. So I start out with a chest, and this is going to be our base input chest. Oh, I should probably explain the end goal of this process before I even start building. Uh, the end goal of this process is to output... Uh, the carpenter blocks, the wedge slope, the carpenter blocks themselves, and the carpenter stairs. Now, the reason I'm doing this uh, is one proof of concept to show how the liquid crafters work, mostly because I don't have any other real reason to use them just yet. I haven't thought of a good one yet. And two, uh, well, I'm going to be honest. I know it's optimistic, but I'm going to be honest. I'm doing this for B-double-O. Uh, not because he, he's actually, like, I, it's not like I talk to him or anything. It's not like he's going to be watching this or anything. It's just, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. He wants to make these blocks automatically, and he was having trouble doing it. He was doing it with, uh, oh, what, what what are they called? Come on, go away. Uh, the, the, these guys, the crafting stations. Now, the crafting stations, by default, do not automatically craft things. 
However, it's a setting in the configuration for the better storage mod. And he set it on the attack of the B team server, set it up his uh, automatic thing and it crashed the server, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I don't think it was working very well to begin with, but then it crashed the server. Uh, and I'm not going to use the crafting stations because as my own rules state, I am not allowed to fiddle with the settings. And it's getting to be night, and I'm going to go inside before I attract any creepers. But yes, I'm not allowed to fiddle with any settings, so I'm not allowed to set those to automatically craft. Plus the overwhelming fact that I don't want to risk crashing my server. Which is why I don't use the crafting pipes. Which, oh... You know, I'm going to have to back up my server someday and just test those crafting pipes because I have I have so many ideas for those crafting pipes. I would just have this bank of crafting tables, the the whatever I would need to use uh either the 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 crafting station or the liquid crafters, whatever I would need to do use. I would have a bank of them set up to automatically craft things on demand because they're just awesome. All right, so our goal today is to automatically build the carpenter blocks. And at first I thought, well, we'll just make a machine for the carpenter's blocks, and then we'll make another machine for the wedges, and then we'll make another machine for the stairs. And as is usual for me, I went, well, why bother doing that? To make the stairs, you need the carpenter's blocks, and to make the wedge slopes, you need the carpenter's blocks. So why don't we just do it all at once? And that's what I did. I made it all at once. And boy, howdy, did it take a long time to get right. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I had to fiddle with these settings one at a time. Like, okay, so we got pneumatic servo here. And we can see how, you know, we could set the stack size. I had to fiddle with these by setting, incrementing them one at a time to get it to work. Not here, mind you. This one can be 64, so I'm just going to leave that as its default. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, I had to fiddle with these all one at a fracking time. <laughs> and it was it was insane. All right, so we got a chest. This is our main input chest. This is where we're going to put all our wood. And then we're going to go into our liquid crafter here and split them into uh, pipes. Or, no, uh, uh, planks. Planks, that's the word I'm looking for. And I'm going to grab a couple of stacks of logs here. Plop. All right, and then we put, you know, that there. So we create our template, and it will create the four wood planks once we get, you know, a redstone signal. Now I'm just going to... Oh, yeah, it's not going to do anything right now because it needs a redstone signal. It needs a redstone pulse before it will craft anything. So I'm going to have to do this mostly manually. All right, now put in our pneumatic servos here, switch these up, empty hand into here. Now this is where we have to start fiddling with the output, the stack size. No, that way. All right. This one is going to go to the liquid crafter to build the sticks. And that one needs to be set to a stack size of nine. This one is going into a storage chest to hold just the regular planks. And this one has to be set to a stack size of two. And there are reasons for this. I just, I'm not gonna get into the math to do that. <laughs> to explain why that is. All right, then we need an item duct output here into another chest, and this is where we're gonna store some sticks. And it needs to be configured, boop. Just automatically, oh right, I need a pneumatic servo, and then we could just configure it so it's just automatic. The stack size here doesn't matter either. Alrighty, then, all right, so that's like that. I'm looking at, I have this in a picture on my other monitor, 
and I'm comparing it to it. So I make sure that I have the numbers right and I have the build right because I'm not kidding when I say this is complicated. All right, so we got two output pipes here and they connect in the center to output to another liquid crafter. Now, let's hold off on that for a second and we'll set up these output pipes. There we go. Bloop, bloop. This, the stick output that's going in here needs to be set to eight because this guy is going to make our uh, uh, carpenter's blocks and carpenter's blocks are made with eight sticks and one plank. So we want an eight to one for this one. So we want eight output here and one output here, right? Just one? Yes, one. Now I know this might seem a little bit weird. We got two output here and then one output here. Why do we do that? Well, I want a buffer built up in this chest. I could probably get away with one to one, but that would screw up the timing over here where it's nine. Uh, if we adjust this side, we have to adjust the other side. And yeah, that took a couple of hours for me to figure out how to do. Um, what I need real quick, I need my saw. And I need a cover. Because I'm going to put a cover right there. Whee! And then put another output here off in this direction. Bloop. And then this is actually going into another liquid crafter that's going to make the slope because the slope requires sticks. Whoop. And yeah, so put that there. Oh, there's already one installed. That's fine. Bloop. And you need to be set to one. All right. And there's a reason for that as well. It's because, well, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> uh, yes, this is this is extremely, extremely complicated. And we haven't even gotten to the point where I'm actually wiring these things up to automatically pulse. Uh, we put the third liquid crafter here. And we don't connect it to these systems because we don't have to worry about it. This one's going to make the stairs. Uh, these guys, the carpenter stairs, and the carpenter stairs only use the carpenter's blocks, so we have to make them first. Now, the carpenter's blocks are going to be made here. Um, so let's make some sticks really quick so we can make this. And carpenter block, or, well, no, one plank, eight sticks. All right, and that outputs five carpenter's blocks. Keep an eye on the time here. Then, well, let's just set up the outputs really quick. So this is our end result, is three outputs here. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And of course, pipes to output them like they need to be. Whoa, nope. There we go. And then just set them up automatically. We don't have to worry about the stack size since this is just an output. Don't got to worry about that. Now, what we do have to worry about is we have these, we have five carpenter blocks. So now we need to output them in a correct timing so that uh, we're getting enough to go into this liquid crafter, which is going to be making the slope and this liquid crafter, which is going to be making the stairs, which I should probably make some carpenter blocks so I can actually do this properly. I need more planks. Not many, but at least. I'm going to need more sticks as well. Oh, and more planks because I need reference points. Okay. So, like I said, so we got uh, five carpenter blocks being made here, so we need to output them in the correct timing. Now, like I said, I've already figured out the correct timing, so you guys don't have to worry about that. And then on the uh, stairs side, we output stack size of two. On the slope side, we output a stack size of one, 
and then on the output side, stack size of two. Oh, and we didn't activate that automatically. Alrighty. Everything's set up right. Everything's set up right. Oh yeah, I did mention that this one didn't we didn't have to worry about stack size, but we do have to worry about this guy's stack size uh outputting the carpenter's blocks. These two, on the other hand, we don't have to worry about. However, we do have to worry about setting them up. Now we this guy's just the stairs. So that's perfectly fine right there. This guy is the slope, and the slope is three to three to make the slope. So that's why this is outputting one and that is outputting one is because we need a one to one to make the slope. All right. And then this is also why this is outputting eight and this is outputting one because here we need an eight to one. And then this guy, like I said, is just worried about these carpenter blocks and it's, yeah. So it just needs to worry about this guy. So we're, we're just having the two leftovers go out this way. I am going to quickly go to sleep again because I don't want this entire thing being blown up by creepers. I have been blown up by creepers far too many times. Oh, it's just really, really annoying that I have to go back and rebuild things every now and then. But, you know, those are the concerns of the game. I need to find an ocelot so I can take care of that creeper problem. Uh, combining uh, advanced genetics and ocelots, you can basically repel creepers instead of attract them. Okie dokie. Now, so this is all set up the way it needs to be. Uh, we got our timing set up right. Uh, yes, yes. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Two. Two. One. All right, so the timing is set up right. And so this machine is almost done. What we've got to do is set up a redstone pulse to make it work. Because like I said, these liquid crafters, ooh, might help if I actually put like the recipes in these things. Let's make sure all the recipes are in there. So we want to output sticks here. So two oak planks, output sticks, output planks. This one creates the slope, the block, and the stairs. And that's everything. Yeah, so everything should be good. All right, now, when I built this on my test world, I created the timers underneath just because, well, it was easier that way. Uh, because of how I built this more horizontally than, ver or than well, horizontally then um i built this wider than i really probably should have i could have probably made this more of possibly two lines or something like that so i could just run the redstone beside it uh but i didn't and the reason i didn't do that is well this looks cooler this way actually <laughs> Alrighty, so what I've got to do is get my redstone set up. So we got redstone, redstone repeater, and stone. And I'm going to need a lever, but I don't have one. Forgot to make it. Alright, so we put repeat or put any form of solid block underneath the three liquid crafters here, and then repeaters between them. That way, when this block gets a redstone signal, which it will... All three of these blocks will get a redstone signal as well. Um, from here, we have to do basically the same thing. Boop. No. Boop. There we go. Alrighty, and I'm going to put one more repeater down just for timing's sake. I might have to add another repeater, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, so I should have created a decent loop there. Now, I could probably do this with a timer, but again, I did this testing with repeaters, so that's what I'm going to go with right now. Timer would probably work better in the long run. But yeah, that's 
Ugh, come on. Where are my cobblestone? That's not there. There we go. There's some cobblestone. And yeah, I just start this off with a lever. Really quick pulse of a lever. And yeah, the timing is not right. Um, pop. Let's try that again. All right, that should be fine. That's a nice quick little pulse. That should pulse fast enough for our purposes. And we do need to, it to pulse pretty quick. Um, so it should work. Should work fine. Actually, you know what? I want to see if I can get this pulsing a little bit quicker. Let's just kick that one to one and that one to one as well. All right, that is a little bit quicker. Not a lot quicker, but a little bit quicker. All right, so put you away. All right, so now what we have, we have this guy getting power. Well, all three of them basically are getting a pulsed redstone signal. And that's what we want to see. Because now we can take our wood that we gathered. Bloop. And I'm just going to throw these two stacks in here. Put them in here. They go into here and then start building up. And we get our sticks out here. That's perfect. Sticks go in here and they get sucked out in a very specific pattern. We get our oak planks here. Bloop. And then we get eight to one here with the sticks and the planks, which creates our five carp carpenters blocks. We get a one to one here. There we go. Which creates our slopes. And then we get, well, I mean, it's just a matter of time before we get the four here. But since we're getting two at a time, these the stairs are being produced at the exact same speed as the slopes. Now, the only thing that I've noticed is that the stairs and the slopes are made at the same speed. However, the blocks are made twice as fast. But again, however... That shouldn't be too much of a problem because you use blocks more than anything else, right? I mean, the blocks are used to build other things, so you would want more blocks than anything else. So, I mean, it, it works out perfectly, right? At least that's how I see it. Now, again, I'm not attaching these to the lockers of infinity because this isn't really an infinity thing. Uh, one little piece of information that I figured out uh, with the lockers. It was a little bit difficult to figure out how to do this with the lockers, is get them facing the right direction. We can see how all the doors are facing off in that direction. But uh, like this locker, if I put it down, it's facing in the other direction. So what you got to do is the where you want the handle, like if I want the handle on this side, you got to aim at the other side of the block. So if I want the handle on this side, I click or I would shift click there because if I shift click on the other side, boop, it basically acts like two separate lockers, which is actually really cool. I like that idea. I really really do cuz then you could have separated lockers that are touching. I don't want that, so I just put them together. We. And that's pretty much it. Um I'm quite proud of this design. I think it looks really, really cool. Uh, it's really, really fancy. And it seems to work out really, really well. Um, let's see, how much further do you have to go? Oh, you're done. That was quick. It went a lot slower in testing because I would throw more logs in there. Now, there is a slight problem. Ooh, I've got a timing problem. Small timing problem. Nothing too terribly major. That's two. That's nine. That's two and nine, right? Yeah, that's two and nine. That's what it's supposed to be. Hmm. Uh, the problem comes with the fact that this is based purely on timing. Uh, I usually don't like building machines that are based on timing. I like having buffers and everything. But I could not figure out how to do it based on buffers. Now, if these liquid crafters could pull out stuff from like a chest that's sitting beside them, oh, I'd be all over that. 
this would be done, basically. <laughs> this entire thing would be done. Uh, like the automatic crafting tables um, from Red Power, I think. I'm fairly sure they were Red Power. Um, yeah, Red Power, not Project Red. Red Power. Uh, they could pull out from chests that were just sitting directly beside them. Now, I could make this thing work so much better, almost infinitely, if I could do that. But I can't do that, and it's kind of a shame. But that's okay. Uh, the problem that does come up is every now and then you'll have to check the system and clear out the liquid crafters because chances are they're going to jam up. Like we can see there's 31 sticks here and there's three sticks here, but there are no planks anywhere left in the system. All the planks were used. Uh, they're basically all right here. Uh, so I'm going to, it might be just that simple to fix that. Cause we're making too many sticks, not enough planks. So it might just be that simple that I have to crank this down. Um, it might also be that I have to crank this up one. It's, it's, it's fiddly. It is, but that's basically where my timing has to be fiddled with. But until then, all you'll have to do every now and then is come in and clean out the liquid crafters, and it will run again. And that's about it. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I hope that was informative, especially over here if anybody made that machine, because that was that was an interesting little glitch that I found. That was, that was a fun one. I didn't think it would do that. Um, hey, you're just kind of floating there. Pop. Yay. Oh, I also found another... Well, actually, you know what? I have no idea what exactly is doing this. Um, the rowan trees. If you chop a whole bunch of them down, uh, the, the, the ants show up and try to kill you. Now, I don't know if... I'm not having that problem here, and I've chopped down um, quite a bit of these trees... <laughs> with this system. I don't know if it's because it's an automatic system or it's because Treebeard is there. I want to test it, but not on this server because I don't want to kill Treebeard. And that's how I would have to test it. Basically, I would have to kill Treebird and... Er, Treebeard. Treebird. Treebird! Yay! <laughs> uh, but I would have to kill Treebeard and let this machine do its thing and see if another one shows up. Uh, but I don't want to kill Treebeard. Though, I guess uh, technically I could because, I mean, I just I can make name tags and I could just capture them and rebuild them. Eh, whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would actually lay odds that only one Ent will ever spawn at a time, in probably in a specific area. So if you have one captured like that, you probably never have to worry about it again. Anyways, I'm going to end the episode here because mm, we did a lot today. We did some awesome stuff today, and that, that's actually pretty sweet. So I am going to say to you guys, see you next. No, see you in the next episode. Uh, please like, subscribe. Um, wait, how did that go? There's comment, and there's a fourth one that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Crap! I need to write down my outro and actually like practice it or something. I don't know, but okay. So I'll say to you guys as always, keep playing the game and have fun.